Uh, so today, like I already said, we're in Waxahachie. You did. So I don't need to lay that out again. So you know you're not, we're not high atop my garage. We're not at our studio, which is our home away from home. We are at Meet Church. So you're like, ah, you guys don't go to church. Yes, we do. <laughs> we go to Meat Church. We're at Meat Church Barbecue Supply. And joining us is the owner, the CEO, the Grand Poobah <laughs> no of one's Meat doing that. Church Barbecue Supply. He is Matt Pittman. Everybody knows that, though. Hello, Matt Pittman. Thanks for having me. Pittman. Thanks for being here, I should say. Yeah, thanks for having us. That's what we should say. It's got some phenomenal Jordan 3s on. They're Jordan 4s, but fours, thank you. 4s, okay. Sorry, the 3s and 4s <laughs> often confuse me. Jake does have shoe envy, I've noticed, quite a few times when we're out. You you will notice somebody's footwear. Yeah, especially if we're trying to ask them for money. You've never said anything about me. No, those are chuggy as fuck. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Are these dad shoes? Yeah. They're just 100%. black. 100%. Oh, yeah. gosh darn it. Yeah. It wasn't just me. All right. Okay, but if Dan is wearing Jordans, that's pretty weird, right? There's, he can't step up his shoe game. He, it just is what it is. I Be- can, and I will. You won't. I'm I'm a guy who changes. I'll change over time. Right. Rolling with a Zeke 1-5 on and some J's. Yeah, I don't even know what those things mean, but I hope to someday. Do you understand what he's saying? I do. Zeke's going to look fat and 1-5. <laughs> I listened. Okay. Yeah. You're, uh, you're a big shoe guy? You're a shoey. Yeah, you you got to spend your money on something. Are you a foodie yeah. or a shoey? Both. Okay. Um, yes, the CEO and Grand Pooba of Meat Church Barbecue. <laughs> when did he learn to the, start using this here, term Grand Pooba? Like just... I'm uh, very interested in your story. It's pretty amazing. I watched your audition tape to get on, uh, what was the the barbecue show? Barbecue Pitmasters. Okay. Shot right here in Waxachie, Texas, the, the uh, tryout video was anyway. And uh, that that's you credit that I would guess for really helping uh, helping your star rise a bit. It was definitely my start. I'm proud of it. I got third on the show. Um, out third of, out of three contestants. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem like as high as you could get at all. Seems my, very my low. My mom has Quite never low. been more proud. But it's you're like on, I'm on the podium. But you're on TV. Hey, did you know this? So I meet Matt. Tell Jake uh, the first thing you said. When, well, I thought I just met you. I didn't just meet you, though, did I? 17 years ago, I got second place in your bowling tournament. Mm, I didn't that? realize it was 17 years ago. I said 10. You corrected yeah, me. <laughs> I think it might have been it's more 17-ish. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Everything does seem like 10 years, the doesn't it? The charity tournament that was canceled because it didn't make enough money. That's what I told that, you, yeah. That's the story. Just, I bowled in it twice. But I guess I'm, I'm, in both times you had it, I bowled in it. Right. The first year I bowled against uh, the eight-year-old kid who turned out to be a PBA champion. He is Anthony Simonson. I think he's like running the circuit now. Yeah, he's great. Like yeah. he is the tiger of bowling. <laughs> and uh, the next year, I uh, I wanted to win, so I um, I bowled against uh, Jeremy Moran. Was bored out for the uh, the muser, the musers, yeah. and I bowled against his wife who is blind, and I beat her, beat her soundly. I might add. Soundly. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that that's what you got to do in these the, yeah. the barbecue thing. It can you know? backfire, though. I mean, You I should lost. have, like, Jake and, or me and, uh, you know, this guy. They're going up against you. You want to make sure you're going to win. All right. Yeah, I try just, not to compete anymore, but I'm down. Okay, for the future. I lost to a blind guy in axe throwing, so sometimes that can backfire. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Sounds dangerous. It was in the semis. It does sound dangerous it to does. have a blind yeah, guy like throwing an axe. Yeah. But- Handed yeah. him a sharp blade for. Anyway, uh, the king of Dallas Cowboy tailgates, right? That's what they call me. Seen on uh, the Jimmy Fallon show. He's a dork, right? He was honestly very cool. That's he was very cool. That still didn't answer the question. He <laughs> could still be a dork. <laughs> uh, you got job there, too, during the uh, Super Bowl uh, challenge, the Super Bowl barbecue challenge. I, I did get jobbed. Um, I've never won on TV. So You're just see, an also there, ran. I, I got second. Out Always of two. an also ran. Yep. And then you've been on College Game Day. You've been on McAfee. 
I saw you were on Uncut with Jay Cutler. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a trip. It was me, him, and Eric Trump. Bizarre <laughs> trio. <laughs> yeah, bizarre trio. Um, but, it, yeah, it was cool. How does that come about? So Jay Cutler wants you on his show. How yeah. does that – or Jimmy Fallon, like, what's – do you how have do they an reach agent? out to you? Yeah. So we – I don't use an agent of representation, and so they just people just randomly reach out, and Jay and I have common friends, and a friend called and said, Jay wants to have you on his podcast, and like he has like big names on there, like Mark Cuban. I'm like, why would he have me? So he wanted me to cook. He likes to, I guess he watches my cooking videos, so I went up to Franklin. He lives in Leapers Fork, actually, and uh, it was, he said, well, it's going to be me, you, Eric Trump, and... <laughs> Carrie Underwood's brother-in-law, who plays this. <laughs> well, he lives next. He lives next door to Mike Fisher and Carrie Underwood. And Mike's brother has this Instagram character called Rut Daniels. He's like a redneck-looking. They they sell like outdoors wear. So it was a trip. He just shows up and barges in on the middle of it. I mean, I'll never forget it. We were sitting here recording, and you know, he used to be married to Kristen Cavallari, and she comes walking in to drop off the kids in the middle of this podcast. And I don't remember what happened after that because I was. <laughs> Just look in that direction. It's a great reality show. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Maybe no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. right. That's right. No, you're right. Like, well, I mean, my wife watches it. I've yeah. heard about it. So it's really yeah. good. Yeah. But okay. So when you did bowl in the uh, the bad radio bowling tournament many many years ago, which was um, which I was a part of, uh, you were not this man that we see before us now. No. Yeah. Meat Church was not a thing back then. Was not was a, working in my corporate job, but you were cooking all the time. Yeah, I've always been a like crazy outdoor cook, so definitely. Okay, that's the cool thing about yeah these stories that you hear is like this guy just kind of did his bit. Yeah, and eventually, like it doesn't pay off for everyone. It's probably not a Rudy story. <laughs> like you can't just necessarily stick with whatever it is because it you know that would not be prudent. But uh, so you had like a real job. Like a real good job, right? Yeah. I mean, I was 19 years in corporate America, left as a vice president of IT, overseeing like 60 people. It's not nearly as cool as what I do now, but it was a good career job. Yeah, solid. Big family. Yeah. Money. Yeah, like my wife is like, you're never leaving that job kind yeah. of situation. Yeah. Uh, 401k, <laughs> Benny's. Stocks. All yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Stop just saying stuff. I am learning like a lot about business. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sep. So you knew all of it. You knew good. You knew about business before opening your own business. See, that was our problem. Yeah. We we yeah. knew about like just kind of doing a show, a mediocre show, and then all of a sudden we have to do business stuff. And that's why we're kind of failing. But you, <laughs> you had a plan. You're you, probably not going to get a shoe partner, by the way. Just, I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> okay. Regard, yeah. but. But, but you had a plan going in and that's how you could convince your wife to, hey, uh, yeah. what so, if I leave this job? I was this crazy cook, you know, I just... People like like if we were all friends, you'd be like, "Well, Matt's probably cooking this weekend," so it was just kind of known. And uh, I watched the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, and you know, I I looked at a friend of mine who was like an amateur video guy, and I said, "You want to make a tryout video for me? If I, uh, you know, record me because most of the videos were terrible." So we went right down here past the square to our feed store, and I I remember I was out of wood, so I stopped at the gas station. I bought a Duraflame log to put in my pit, <laughs> which was not a good idea, by the way. Um, but I made a kind of funny video, and it basically went viral on Twitter. So Daniel Vaughn, the uh, barbecue editor of Texas Monthly Now, he wasn't that at the time. He retweeted it, and then, like, every well-known barbecue personality sent it out, and it overwhelmed the producer to a point where he sent me a direct message, and he was like, you need to call off the dogs. And I wrote back and said, I don't know if you know how Twitter works or not, but that has nothing to do. I'd, you know, your name probably shouldn't have been your handle. The name of the show probably shouldn't have been your handle. So they picked me. Uh, I was at the Sugar Bowl watching Trevor Knight destroy Alabama, and I'm an Alabama guy, and I wasn't sad at all because I got the call walking into the game to be on the show. So I went on the show, finished a solid third place, but the producer, long story short, is the producer said, if you make a barbecue product, we'll show it on the show. And I said, what do you mean? She said, what do you season your meat with, or what do you sauce it with? And I said, well, I make two seasonings, and I use XYZ barbecue sauce. She goes, well, put it in a bottle, and we'll show it. So I put my two seasonings in a bottle, and I called the first one Meat Church Holy Cow, and the second one Meat Church Honey Hog. And by the time the show aired, I'd launched the website, meetchurch.com, filed the trademark. And basically, I wasn't a fan of Facebook because I don't like to scroll through all the crap on Facebook. So when Instagram came along, I thought, well, this is cool because I can post a picture of my food. So I always give this example. I'd say, here's a steak. I cooked on my big green egg, seasoned with Meat Church, holy cow, 375 degrees for eight minutes or whatever I would say. And people were into that. And so I was kind of doing content creation before that was a thing. Yeah, cooking videos are huge. 
Yeah. Like, so. were you a big viewer of cooking videos or no? You're just a viewer. Not really. I just did it. Yeah, I just did it, and and I could tell people I had a knack for it. People, I had a knack for it because people were into it and liked it. So I just leaned into it. So I would, you know, every time I would post a photo of my food, I would get sales on the website. So here we are. Okay, video is king. So did they have a barbecue editor back in the day too? I don't know like when Daniel they, took who? that job, but Daniel Vaughn. Yeah, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was quite early twenty tens. Yeah, so say. around that yeah, time, we had him on the show a couple times on the Shake Joint. Okay. Yeah. Like, just that that exists is weird. It's Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Quit his job being an architect. I got a really good job and hopped into that. Did your parents cook? My grandmother's taught me to cook, but it was like Southern food. Not, no, I'm self-taught barbecue. And okay. now I know, you know, now at this point I know everybody in barbecue, so we all help each other. But no one taught me to cook outside. I did it on my own. I actually start, went to a crawfish boil out of high school and didn't know what a crawfish boil was. And when I showed up in this guy's backyard and there's all these people around a table, this would have been late nineties. I was like, that's cool. Cause it was like the communal aspect of it. And mm-hmm. so that's got, that's what got my start. And then I think this will be 25 years ago. I went and I used to be a water boy for Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. And in a moment of dumbassness, I quit that job to go buy tickets. Sure. <laughs> so somebody had to do the cooking. So I was like, well, I'll do it. And so that's uh, those two things are really what got me started. Did you meet Rowdy? I can't stand it. He's an ass whip. Um, <laughs> We actually have a banner. We had a banner that said Rowdy Sucks that we used to hang up back when Parcells was a coach. Yeah, I can't stand that guy. I saw him well, driving down the road. It's not a real person. So well, no, he's, to... I mean, he has his own van now. I was behind him on 30 recently, and I almost ran him in the ditch. <laughs> and you're a big sports guy, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't know why. I said this in the restroom of the, the Stars game last night. I don't know why we like sports, because 99% of the time, it doesn't work out for us. Yeah. This is when the Knights had just scored, so we're all – Full of anxiety, but yeah, big sports guy. Yeah, last night worked out well. It was awesome, yeah. Um, but then your association uh, association with the Cowboys, what have you done for them? You've done a ton. Yeah, and it's funny. Um, I've just gotten all this random traction over the last year where I started doing things. I, I hosted, they have a barbecue festival out there. started two seasons ago. I hosted that, hosted it again last year. Someone took notice the first year, asked me to come bring my smoker like inside the gate, like inside the Miller Lighthouse, so I did that. And then the team started calling, and honestly, one of my big breaks, what I'll just say, was uh, Billy Price, lineman we had on the P squad this year. He came down in the summer, hung out with me, and then connected me with Dak, and Dak called me last year and had me cook um, cook a, a, the dinner, the, the uh, quarterback O-line dinner on a Thursday night. So we did that, which led to me cooking for the whole team. And uh, I'm actually going to teach in OTAs. I'm teaching the players in OTAs in a couple weeks and then teaching the coaches the next day. So I was the so-called celebrity chef the last game of the year, did a make-a-wish thing with a kid, um, quite a few things last year. So it was, it was a lot of fun. But it is the number one thing I do on social media that gets me more shit than anything I do across the country. Wait, some kid said their make-a-wish was to cook with you? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I was just as shocked. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it's good. Yeah, but It was that's, bizarre. He, yeah. it was, he wanted to meet me. Brandon Cooks and Dak. And I was like, one thing does not belong <laughs> to the Cooks. Yeah. I actually turned down. They're like, well, you can go on the field before the game and meet him. I was like, I'll just meet him in his suite because everybody's going to be like, who's this dude? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, you're, you're aware of that. Uh, what's your association with the Stars? Uh, so, in, I used to be a season ticket holder, late 90s. And um, so, the way this happened, in 1997 – my one of my fraternity brothers worked in the clubhouse for the rangers and so he said you want to come work for the team so in 97 i was a clubby with like juan gonzalez pudge will clark great team man that must have been awesome it was it was awesome will clark i'll, I'll tell you a story you didn't ask i'm gonna tell you will clark turned 40 and uh, mark mclemore looked at me and he said can you go to the wives lounge and get his present and i said yeah after the game so i go in the wives lounge and there's a goat on a leash i had to walk a goat in the clubhouse <laughs> this was also back when there weren't many women interviewing and so if a female would come in, which was only about once a homestand, Pudge would literally put everything on but his underwear and pants first. He would, he would, <laughs> I've never seen a male put on his shirt and button it and tie a tie. It's very unstable. Hunter, Lee Stevens magically dropped his towel right when she walked in. Yeah, times have changed. But so those, Pudge would do that on purpose? Yes, he would literally be standing there with nothing on below his button-down shirt with its tie tied. Was that a playoff year? 
Uh, it was. It was. 97. 97. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. In fact, um, all, I had to get all the players to sign balls to throw into the crowd, and most of the relief pitchers had me sign their balls. So some poor kid has some Matt Pittman, Xavier Hernandez <laughs> autograph balls. <laughs> Xavier Hernandez. I'm like, couldn't I get like a John Smith or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. get a playoff share? Um, that's a <laughs> – I'm bitter about that. Um, so Zach was our clubhouse manager, and uh, he had two kids that worked in the clubhouse. They were yay tall. And – Somehow his kids got my playoff share, which is fine. I'm not bitter because now one of them is the GM of the Angels and one is the clubhouse manager for the Braves, and I'm a lifelong Braves guy, and so the Braves really took care of my family this year, so I buried the hatchet. I don't think he knows that he got my playoff share, but funny you ask. Yeah. No, that's always interesting to me. Okay, so you asked about the Stars. That yeah. trainer knew the Stars trainer, and the next year, actually in 99, the year – okay, so the year after we won the Cup, 99-2000, I started working for the team – uh, in the locker room being a game day equipment assistant. So I worked in downtown Dallas and I would just shoot over to reunion and be there from like 5 PM to 1 AM setting up the benches, uh, taking care of the penalty box, um, being a gopher for the players during the game if they needed anything. So I did that through 2012. Uh, so yeah, crazy, wow. crazy hockey fan. So yeah, the, Jamie Ben was the last player I had. And my buddy who was the third equipment manager is now the head guy, Denny Sotart. It's his first year as the head equipment manager. So Super cool. Know everybody down there, so it was fun to hang out. Turco started uh, with me, so he started the year after me, actually. Uh, so we're good buddies, so he, he hosted me for a little bit last night, so that was fun. Yeah, he's a good dude. I'm glad awesome you remembered dude. I was talking about the stars because I totally forgot. <laughs> There's no chance. <laughs> yeah, I could talk the ears off the statue, so I'm, I was going to yeah, get Yeah, can you reset somehow. what we're doing here today? Um, <laughs> be, yeah. We're, we're, of course, at uh, Meat Church Barbecue, but uh, – no man, that's uh, that's pretty. How did you ever have time to actually find a wife and have kids and do? Because I'm, I'm glad she's not here right now. It just feels like you've done you sound a million. Like my wife. Yeah, like I don't sleep. You were really? Yeah, I don't sleep a lot. But what do you get? What's your sleep schedule? Uh, well, this weekend it was rough. It was about four hours a night, but she's out of town, so I had to get up, take the kids to school. So I don't know. I got five or six hours last night. I was good. Okay, so yeah. you're fine with that. But what you don't have to do is go put the wood in the smoker at two a.m. Only when I need to. I, I actually did cook for y'all today, um, but I, I leveraged my Traeger last night so that I could sleep. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's like a common thing. Like yeah. Travis, I'm I'm buddies with Travis. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we met. That's right. Yeah, and his bit is like yeah, 3 a.m. every day. Yeah. Got to go out there and fire it up. And so this uh, the brick and mortar store, as they call it, you don't have to have this. No, in fact, when we first started, I, I actually made kind of an ignorant statement. I was like, I don't care if we sell in Waxachi, but I didn't mean that in a bad way. I meant that because we're an internet business and our wholesale yeah. business. But about the time I was leaving my corporate job, my dad had an old hardware store in Rogers, Texas, and it was like a bunch of old dudes would just go hang out there. And I, I said to my wife one day, it'd be cool if we had like a hangout spot. And a friend of mine, his wife had a boutique here, and he said, you need to get a shop downtown. There's no businesses for men. It's all boutiques. And antique stores and it's a cool vibe and you dig it so we rented a spot on the other side of the courthouse uh, for several years and then we outgrew it and we moved into this one in june of last year but okay. this is fun i mean this is this is like the mothership uh, people true story buy plane tickets to come here which i don't know why but it's insane that's yeah, what i was gonna ask you i about. saw there was a, a couple people like from europe at your last class yeah um, is that common so, we teach a barbecue school at TX Whiskey once a month. It hosts in Fort Worth. Hun- hold, yes, yeah. holds 140 people, and in 2023, we averaged people from 20 different states per class. <laughs> so in that one, we had 19 states in three countries: two from the UK and two from Canada. And I see, but you've also traveled overseas now. I've taught in Sweden, taught in Australia. Um, I'm supposed to teach in Sweden again this summer. I don't think it's going to happen. Scheduling issues, but yeah. Bar- American barbecue is hot around the world, you know, especially in Europe and Australia, big time. And they see that you're popular on the gram or the YouTube. and I, I guess. And they're yeah. like, hey, let's get this guy. Why do you think England's food sucks so bad? That's, uh, that's a great question. I went over there after college and had their nasty-ass sandwiches with cucumbers. and <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. My daughter is in. And their beer's hot. Or it's not yeah, cold. yeah, what are we doing there? Yeah. Warm? It, it's, yeah. not, it's not hand-cramping cold, as I like to say, so... It's not cold beer. You just get a warm beer. It's not cold enough. It's not cold it's like medium. Beer. Yeah. My daughter's main complaint with uh, she's in France as a exchange thing, you know, college, and uh, <laughs> she said that. I mean, she didn't just go there for no reason. She uh, 
She said the sp- the food is not. It's very. Although it's good, it's just not. There's no spices. She doesn't have any. There's no kick oh, to I anything. Can, I can send some spice over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. It's great that you're here, man. And uh, I mean, it's great that we're here. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, he's here. probably here, yeah. just like as a matter of often. course. But you're not from Waxahachie. How no. do you land in Waxahachie? Yeah, I was it born... is a very cool, very old timey, you know, square. The whole scene is cool. I absolutely love it. It's the greatest vibe. I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with family from Georgia and Alabama. So I'm a Southern boy. My parents divorced, and my dad came down here for work, and I, I decided to come with him. And uh, so I've been here since I was 13, so I'm pretty well Texan at this point. But my in-laws live and lived in Waxhachie, and uh, they, when my wife and I were dating, they were like, you guys should move to Waxhachie. And I'd never been out here. So it's definitely like a, it's like a small town feel. It's really not that small of a town anymore. A lot of people are moving here, but it's, it's awesome, and especially just, with this square. Like, it's, it's super cool. Yeah, you do whatever your wife says. Um, <laughs> no. uh, so do you feel that you've surpassed Dale Hansen as the most famous man in Watson? Th- listen, uh, I try to be humble. There's that is not even a question. Nobody even knows Dale Hansen in Waxhachie. You never see, and he can, he'd, he'd tell you. I how long we've we been here? Twenty years. I've seen Dale Hansen in Waxhachie two times. Really? What about Edward R. Burrow? I believe that's the name of his donkey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was like, who's that? He's in TV. I've seen yeah. Dale two times, and it was at Christian, my oldest high school banquet, and then he emceed another thing. I had to get an MC for something Friday night, and I called Pete Dale because true story. So we're going to bag on Dale in that. No, we don't see Dale very often. I think he's off having a good time somewhere. Well, there's a good <laughs> there's bet. A high chance. Yeah. yeah. Very good bet there. What's the deal with the downtown, the square here? There's like a... It's like the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Did you notice that? I did. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I noted the name Denver Pyle. That's the one I saw. Yeah. Who I felt was, uh, I felt that was Gilligan, but I was corrected. And it's uh, apparently that's Bob Denver. Denver Pyle was Uncle oh, Jesse in uh, the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, I don't know a lot about it. I know it's people that have contributed to the arts and stuff like that. So such as yourself. I'm not. I don't have star. I got asked that last week. How can week. you not get a star? Yeah. Well, what do we have to do? Because well, in Hollywood, where? you just have to pay for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. The, uh, we just saw a notification. There's two new stars coming. One is Big Al, you know, from Kiss FM. He's got a <laughs> restaurant right here. So. Oh, does he really? Yeah. So Big Al is probably the most famous guy in Waxhachie. I'm at number two. Okay, Big Al. Is he coming Still by three. later? Do we understand? Maybe. Oh, okay. we can get him over here for sure. You got to. Is he coming? Yeah, he, so are you excited? You need, you need to ask. So. Oh, video no, man knows all. him. You can embarrass video him. Video man knows him very well. Okay, he so on the um, Kid show Big him. Al about burn his house down a couple months ago, oh. grilling. So y'all need to get him. He came in here wanting a new Traeger, so I got him a discount code, like a friends and family thing. I see him at the grocery store two weeks ago, and he goes, "Boy, I got a story for you." <laughs> well, I said, "Hit me with it." And he said, "Well, I was grilling bacon outside, and he goes, caught my grill on fire." And he goes, "Matt, I'm talking about my house is going to burn down fire, so I'm looking for a fire <laughs> extinguisher. Can't find the wife." She's asleep or something. Called my neighbor. Doesn't have. He's at the airport. He's like, so I had to call nine one one. He said six trucks came <laughs> for his one for, little for fire. bacon. And he looked at the guy and he goes, "Could you have maybe brought two? And they said, "Well, we don't know how big the fire is when you call." So they put out the fire. And he said, as soon as the fire truck leaves, five minutes goes by, the doorbell rings, and it's a delivery man dropping off his Traeger. <laughs> 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 and the wife was like, "Did you plan this?" So yeah, you got to get him with that. All right. I heard you you think sprint. it's funny that his last name is Pittman? Um, I did not believe it was real, but it's. Right. I think it is, right? It's No, I, we changed it. Okay. Yeah. He's doing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to. I Unless mean, you, you could tell me your original. It won't work name. with you guys, but I always tell people, I was, you know, sat the wife down and said, I need to become the Chad Ocho Cinco Barbecue. But it has two T's in it, so it's not spelled right. But I closed on some land a week ago, and the lady's name was Pittman with one T, and I was like, I need to, I need to have one T. But yeah. yeah. That's my, that's my real name. That's, an, uh, that's uh, yeah, you were just born for this, so they say. Uh, well, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having us. Um, we're very excited. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the great Matt Pittman. Quite a crowd here. Appreciate it. What's the deal with this? All right, from uh, Meat Church Barbecue. <laughs> right. All, All right. right, thanks, Ted. Hand of that course. microphone Absolutely. over. Absolutely. The star. To the uh, star of today's program. Um, This is, of course, Matt Pittman. 
uh, real name. Yep. The owner, the CEO uh, of where we are all sitting right now. Thanks for having us, man. The meat looks great. Um, all the other things look great. Uh, I don't know. What else can we say to Matt? Thanks for the beer. Thanks you know, for Sauce you, and Jacob. When you partner it's with Miller Lite, you get, you get a lot of beer. So Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Not a bad deal. Okay. Um, it's funny. I heard you on, I heard you on a, uh, I don't know. I was listening to a couple of different interviews of you over the weekend and you were, this was like from a few years ago when things were first starting to really blow up and it was you having to deal with the comments, mm. yeah, which was kind of funny just to, I don't know. Yeah, it's we, funny to see this world that we live in now where guys could go from one profession to all of a sudden now I'm kind of famous and stuff, but you can't you can't engage. Like you no. can't go back and forth. You learned that though, right? Yeah. I mean, we talk about this a lot. You know, I always say like, if you kick a dog enough times, you're not going to be shocked if it bites you. So we do clap back here and there, but 99 times out of 100, we don't we don't respond. But they're pretty humorous. Yeah. We get, we get some good ones. We make these videos like Jimmy Kimmel mean tweets where we read the negative comments and I just act like I'm sad. So we're not really engaging. We're just kind of okay with it. So those are, those are pretty popular. Those also get, then they get support coming your way. Yeah. It's disarming. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that's good. That's a good way of dealing with it. Got to have fun with it. Anyway, we have closing remarks and you brought like a gift. Yeah. My buddy, Matt, also named Matt, mm-hmm. made you guys a belt. This sucker's heavy, by the way. <laughs> This is a. These world. look like real sweet, comfy pants. Oh yeah, these are Lulus. I'd love to deal with them. Oh okay, you'd love to deal with them. I, I would That's, love to have that, a deal with them. You're putting that out there in case yeah, any Lulu Mon people are listening. I'm. I'm yeah, available. I just in my mind don't know that uh, Lulu is looking for a barbecue. Oh uh, no, no, okay. Let, let, let's shit. talk about this for a few seconds. Although maybe it does <laughs> make you, sense though because it stretches out a little in, bit. When uh, you Lulu yeah. store, it's out of control. Like yes. you can be a. I'm. I'm just gonna say this: fat white girl and have a Lulu deal. Uh-huh. The owners, like the founders, mad about it. So I feel like there's room in their arsenal for a, a fat white barbecue guy. Yeah, <laughs> so. why not? But back to this. Or belt. maybe podcast hosts. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> a dumb zone. So okay, what you're looking at here? Well, let me. Can Take we hold it up in no, front of yeah, the camera? It's yours. Um. It is a. Uh, is this just getting, getting the yeah. Getting, getting the, the, uh, the the dumb, dumb zone. zone. Oh. <laughs> the dumb zone. Uh, what, what the hell is this? World Heavyweight Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling yeah. Championship, Championship Wrestling Belt branded it in the style of the dumb zone. It, it is, looks, looks like, like to be solid gold. It feels as heavy as solid gold. Probably is real. Yep. Probably worth it. It's, it's definitely, definitely real. real. I think it's worth 50K. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> worth more than the Rangers uh, Championship rings. <laughs> oh, I, ha- I wore one this weekend. So your buddy Matt had this made? He's back here. Matt makes these. He has a business. He does this. So he knows every wrestler in the world. He uh, well, was nice stuff to give one to my, my young son, son once. And nice enough to give to you guys. Okay. okay. He's a big, big fan. Big Dumb Zone fan. Put it on, bro. <laughs> you want me to put it on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Go Boy, ahead. that is that is quite heavy. You're the man. Uh, <laughs> do you want to snap me back here? Or what are we... Blake, help him out. I can't do it. Jesus Christ. I'm sitting here talking. How am I, I supposed, supposed to do that? that? Yeah. You got people for that. Yeah. 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 That, that looks, looks beautiful, beautiful man. Yeah, Take your shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> What's what his business it? called? Is that what That's you want? It. <laughs> just you awkwardly just standing there. <laughs> Fan new belts. Okay, okay we'll, we'll, we'll put them in our show, show notes and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm going to go home and wear just this. <laughs> yeah, see if she likes it. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be thrilled. Just kind of saunter in. You put the kids down. Right. Your bath time's over. You're done. There's no big sports on tonight that you care about, right? No. Definitely not. Just kind of walk in the bedroom and see what's Who's up. the champion? Yeah. <laughs> how do you think that'll work? Let us know how that works. Yeah, yeah I will. Yeah. I absolutely will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it didn't work for me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's already been tried once. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Great to meet you again 17 years later. Yeah, let's, let's, let, in 17 years from now, we can ball together again. Yeah. Well, what if we do it a little sooner? <laughs> That's fine. I'm available. Next time. Hey, there's uh, Radio Psycho Dave is over here in the corner. Psycho Thanks. Dave, yeah. Psycho everybody. Dave. Yeah. What an ender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any other closing remarks or are we ready to get out of here? I appreciate you guys being here. It's been a ton of fun. Thanks okay. for having us, man. All right. Sports. Adios, mofo.